Hey everyone, Gavin here, 9mm with Battle Drill 6. Uh, we're going to talk real fast today, we're going to talk about uh, rules of a gunfight. If you haven't seen James Jaeger's video on rules for a gunfight, you need to watch that uh, before you watch this one. But the reason I'm going to cover uh, some of those rules is because some of his rules on a gunfight I, uh, I had some issues with. And I'm not going to say that I necessarily disagree with them or that the information is wrong, uh, but I just, as professional as I can, I'll say that a, I think a different approach needs to be taken with it. So, <clears throat> um, now, like I said, please go check out his video before you watch this. I'm not by uh, any means trying to cut down another instructor. Um, I'm simply trying to, uh, to give you another tool for your toolbox. Think about it a little bit differently. So, uh, now, uh, the other thing on this is in the comments section, you know, we're not, we're not trying to cut down any instructors or we're not trying to, uh, to promote any other instructors here. We're just trying to have a simple and uh, an intelligent kind of dialogue about these, uh, about these gunfight rules. So, with that being said, I'll move into it. Shooting stance should, uh, should not be good. And, you know, he, he, he talks about that. If you're worried about an isosceles or a weaver stance, then you're doing the wrong thing. You need to be moving and uh, using his, uh, what is it, motionless operator is going to lead easily. Uh, his, little, his little acronym for moving and, and, you know, get your ass moving. And he's, and he's absolutely right. And uh, he's absolutely right to a point uh, <coughs> when, he, when, he, when he talks about that because we we do want to focus on our, on our stance and on, on our form and everything while we're shooting. And the intent being that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. Um, when we draw that weapon a thousand times and we do it right every time, then that's, the, that's what we will naturally default to uh, in a gunfight or in a combat situation. We will naturally default to doing that the proper way and to moving where, uh, and, and to, and to doing everything the proper way, moving sidestep and trying not to cross your feet, things like that. So. Do we want to worry about having this perfect isosceles weaver stance, whatever it is? No, absolutely not. That's not a gunfight stance. But there's still proper form that we have to focus on. We still need to be focusing on having a good solid grip, having our arms fully extended, and, uh, and, and getting, uh, getting that, that, that forward motion on our weapon so that we're able to absorb the recoil. So things like that is what we want to be focusing on, not standing here in this teacup saucer thing. Uh, so if that makes sense, that that's what we're looking for with it. We're still we still want to make sure we're focusing on form and function, uh, but we want to make sure that that is uh, that we're not focusing on motionless bullseye shooting form. So if anybody has any questions about that, any clarification, please just leave me a comment. I'll respond to it. Uh, <clears throat> but the uh, the next thing he talks about, uh, or not the next thing he talks about, the next thing that we're going to kind of disagree with here is that uh, talks about Musashi. Musashi's uh, favorite weapon and. Uh, you know, and he he, uh, he he talks a little bit about how his you know his is a Glock and uh, that he doesn't need his Glock, he just needs a Glock, yada yada yada. Um, and that's that's really not what Musashi was talking about. That's kind of the problem I have with it is that when Musashi was talking about how you shouldn't have a favorite weapon, uh, if you actually read his book, uh, uh, the Book of Five Rings, um, you know you you'll figure out in his first duel he actually was using a quarter staff, not a katana. Um, and he talks uh, throughout the book about uh, different duels. And uh, in, in, in each duel, you know, it's not always the same weapon. It's not always a katana. You know, at one point in time, it was actually a wooden katana that he was using. I forget what they call that, but it was actually a wooden uh, training katana. And he used that and, and, and killed somebody with his wooden training katana. And uh, that wasn't even, it wasn't even that, that it was so much what he had on him. It was, that's what he showed up to this fight with. When these duels were set, they said, hey, we're going to fight at this place in this time. They'd show up and, and, and bring their weapon and fight. And, and, and so that's how this was done, and he chose to bring a wooden training katana um, as, as his weapon. And so what he was meaning by, you know, you shouldn't have a favorite weapon, goes back to what, uh, uh, to, to another quote, which I'm not exactly sure who it was. It was something that one of my Aikido instructors used to tell me, and it very well may have been Musashi's, but uh, <clears throat> it was that the, uh, the, 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 warrior, uh, the warrior is the true weapon that whatever tool he yields in his hand is simply just that, a tool. Um, and uh, what, what that's going to say is that, you know, you are, you are the fighting implement. Whatever you have in your hand is just, just an, exten an, an extension of that. And the idea being that if somebody were to break in and barge into my house right now and I didn't have my gun on me, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not undergunned and I'm not beaten until I admit that I'm, be that I'm beaten, until I give up and say I'm done fighting, I can't win this. Uh, so if that makes sense, that's, that's actually more what Musashi is leaning towards. He's not saying that you need to have a Glock or a 1911 or even a pistol. He's simply saying that you need to be in a fighting mindset and be ready to engage, uh, and to, to engage with and destroy your enemy 
uh, with whatever you have available, and you pick the best weapon that's there. So, and, and I think that's really what he was going for with it. Um, so, the other thing, uh, so we talked about, uh, kind of on, on, a, on a caveat with that is uh, the only thing that will stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun, and uh, so it, it, it kind of leads into that same thing. Well, you know, you said that, you, you know, you just said earlier you wouldn't need a gun. Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, you could probably find situations where you could get away without a gun. You still want to have a gun. That is that is the obvious choice there is to have that gun and to engage a gunfight with a gun, not pulling out a pen knife or anything. So just uh, I don't want there to be any confusion with that. That that what stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. But try and get yourself into this fighting mentality and be be prepared for a fight and be willing to use whatever it is that you have rather than giving up. So <clears throat> the. Uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is should we even have gunfight rules? Because what do rules do? Rules put us in a box and say, this is how you have to behave, this is where, where you need to act. And it's kind of a common problem we have with the military, and no offense to the, uh, to the West Point grads out there, but the West Pointers, uh, you'll see, they tend to be worst about it. And, um, you know, they, 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 they focus very much on this doctrine, and uh, that's where we come, come into problems, is because the doctrine is there for a set of guidelines, and we want to follow those guidelines when they apply and then we want to move past that and be able to jump out of this box. But what you see is people is that they can't bring themselves out of this box. They say, this is what the doctrine says, this is what we have to do. So the question that we need to ask is, is do we want to have gunfight rules and say, well, you have to abide by this box? Or are you disciplined enough to say, this is my guideline, I can move outside of it at any point in time. So just something to think about and think about for you personally, uh, if you want to give yourself gunfight rules or if you want to say, well, I'm one of those people that I probably need to stick in the box, so I'm just not going to even give myself gunfight rules and kind of look at it from that mentality. So, if that makes sense, if it doesn't, please leave me some comments and uh, probably remove the video and do another one. But, um, anyways, I appreciate y'all watching. Again, this is Kevin from 9mm reminding you to stay alert, stay alive, uh, subscribe, like us on Facebook, and thanks for watching.